Chamber of Commerce. Oh, okay. Thank you. This is the Carson Chamber of Commerce Economic Development Committee, Thursday, July 25th. Uh, similarly, it's about, it's about 107. So we'll get started. Call this meeting to order. Uh, just each one of you, can you repeat your names? I like to do a roll call now. Just, re just repeat your names in order. Barry, go first. So I'm Barry Wade. I'm the president and CEO of the Chamber of Commerce. And um, so um, I'm going to call people out because everybody's order looks different. So uh, Maria, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. My name is Maria Rosales Ramirez with the LA County Sanitation District, and I'll be your presenter today on the Clearwater Project. Claudia? Hi, everyone. My name is Claudia Vasquez. I'm also with LA County Sanitation Districts, and I'm accompanying Maria today. Amy? Hi, Amy Leon with the Carson Chamber of Commerce. Lena. Lena Whitaker, Vice Chair of Special Events, Carson Chamber. Christine. Christine Saavedra, SA Recycling, Chamber Volunteer. Vera. Vera Robles DeWitt, uh, Board of Directors for the Water Replenishment District of Southern California. Amongst your many hats, I might add. Yes, I'm bad. Uh, Former mayor, how's that? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's great. <laughs> Nikaya. Hi, everyone. My name is Nikaya Carter. I am a real estate and mortgage broker, and I'm happy to be on the meeting today. And June, last but far from least. June, you on? You'll get there. Okay. So June is our representative from um, our assembly member, Mike Gibson's office, and is a good uh, friend to the chamber and always a great source of information. Great, great. Well, I'll give my chairman's report. Uh, our vision in Carson is to showcase Carson. We wanna show the good projects, the new developments. We wanna show the businesses. We wanna show great things that's happening in our city. And one of the greatest things we have going on is uh, this Clearwater project. And we'll discuss that today. Our methodology is to acquire knowledge and facts, information. We want to do aspiration, which is desire for advancement for our business community to go with our vibrant community of Carson. And if you can see me, I'll lift this up a little bit more. Uh, and also, we want to do inspiration, leadership for growth. We inspire. That's why we have a, a leadership Carson where uh, we have people that come in and we take them around. And uh, Christine Saavedra can really talk about that because she handled that for our one of our vice chairs for a number of years. Now, what I'd like to tell you is that I'm very happy to have Maria Rosalie's Ramirez of the Clearwater Project Engineer, Los Angeles County Sanitation District. She will be a guest today, and she, she will talk about the enhancement of the sanitation district to maintain the joint outfall system, or JOS. This main sewage system that collects and treats the wastewater we call sewage from over 5 million, 5 million people in the Los Angeles Basin. The construction of this Clearwater project started in 2019 in Carson and is planned to finish in two, 2027 at the Royal Palms Beach in San Pedro community. The project began at the Joint Water Pollution Control Plant, which is the AK-1 Water Resource Facility, and it's right there at 24501 South Figueroa. They go in there and they go travel to where the dig site is, and they come out there. And it's fascinating to see them, how they we have that many professionals coming in and out. Uh, the Royal Palms Beach new tunnel will connect the existing ocean outfalls. There's actually two right now, one that was constructed in 1937 and another one in 1958 that needs to be enhanced and supported to make sure we don't have any uh, issues with uh, water in our systems 
throughout our communities. Our speaker will be uh, Maria Rosalie Ramirez, and I'd like to bring her on. She will be our speaker to discuss those issues, give us an update, and then we'll proceed on with some of other issues that we're concerned about. Uh, Maria? Thank you. Thank you. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah? Got it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mike, for the kind introduction. Again, my name is Maria, and I'm here to uh, give an introduction on our Clearwater project, which is a very exciting infrastructure project being done on behalf of the sanitation districts, which is where I work. So uh, this is just come some cool, exciting videos kind of showing us what the construction site looks like. But today we're going to be kind of going over the need of the project, where we are in construction of the project, and what's the work that's left to be done. Um, you guys can go ahead and raise, and, uh, raise your hand or ask questions as we go along, because I want to make sure I'm answering any and all questions that you have. Okay. So before we even get there, we kind of have to explain who who is the sanitation districts in case you're not familiar with us. We are um, the agency that treats uh, the wastewater, uh, meets the wastewater needs for pretty much half of LA County. Uh, you can see our service area here in the white, in the white outline area. We extend as far north as Palmdale, Lancaster, Valencia, Saugus, all the way up to the county line in Pomona and definitely the South Bay area. So we serve over 5.5 million people, 78 cities and unincorporated territories uh, in LA County. It's a big job. We've been doing this since uh, 1923. The way we're able to you know, man provide the services, we collect all the wastewater, the sewage, from the homes and businesses and route it through our sewers to our wastewater treatment plants or water reclamation plants. So for the focus of today's presentation, we're gonna focus on the AK Warren uh, facility, which is this one right here on the kind of lower part. This is the facility in Carson. It used to be named the Joint Water Pollution Control Plan, but it got rebranded. It got a little name last year on our in our centennial celebration. Uh, it will, is now known as the AK Warren Water Resource Recovery Facility because this facility does so much for LA County. And because it does this, we are here to able to protect and make, you know make sure that this facility continues to serve LA County for many years to come. So you guys hopefully can see my video. If we were flying over the Warren facility, we would see how we have wastewater uh, treatment plants, facilities where we're able to clean the water. Um, besides yeah. that, we also, can you see the video? Yeah. That's it. Okay, perfect. Uh, we also have digesters, which is a fancy word for nutrient recycling. We have solids recycling, which is the first step for our biosolids or amendment fertilizer program. Uh, we also have a power plant that produces green energy, and you may have heard the Pure Water Project. That's kind of like the, the last um, step for the Warren facility to be able to convert all the resource, anything incoming into a resource, which would be recycling water. But for the purposes of today, oh, by the way, uh, we are having a tour on August 3rd. It's a, a tour open to the public, so I'm here to extend an invitation if anybody's interested to come or would like to help uh, maybe show, share it around with, with interesting parties. We offer this tour on Saturday, August 3rd, free of cost. However, if the chamber would like to schedule a, a tour separately at a date or time, I would be happy to coordinate that as well. So uh, going back to the Warren facility, as we can see here, the Warren facility is outlined in the, the white line that's dash. It's just south of Sepulveda. If you're driving down the 110, it's right almost right across the street from Target. And this is where we clean the water, wastewater treatment plant. Now you guys know Carson is nowhere near the ocean. So how does this water get to the ocean? Well, you can see uh, our outfalls are over here. This is where the water is released into the ocean. And we have two tunnels. These are the tunnels that Mike, you were speaking about. These are the tunnels that carry the clean water from Carson out to the ocean so it can be uh, re re released into the ocean. So. As we heard earlier, these tunnels have been around since forever, 1958, 1937. None of us on this call should have been around back in those times, but these tunnels have been working every day of their existence. They operate 24 seven at full capacity. So for us, um, we wanna be able to make, ensure that the facility can continue to serve LA County. And our concern is making sure that these tunnels uh, are able to um, take the water away from Warren, the Warren facility. So. Our Clearwater project has uh, wants to replace, or not replace, wants to build a third tunnel 
that will allow us to address the aging infrastructure because we mentioned these tunnels were built a long time ago. We have no idea on what condition they are since they full flow full and they both are at capacity. We cannot take one out of service and redirect the flow to the other one. They both have to operate at the same time together in order for us to be able to discharge our water. So we would like to be able to inspect them with what kind of condition they are. Also, these were these tunnels were actually built before there were any seismic standards. And of course, our concern is making sure that these uh, that the uh, in the in the event of a seismic event, the water can continue to leave the Warren facility. And um, we also have a storm limited storm flow capacity. So when it rains, water doesn't just you know not go into our sewer system. Water can go into our sewer system. It can enter the site through the Warren facility, and that means that our facilities can the flow leaving our site can actually almost triple. Um, if you guys remember the atmospheric event in February, those heavy rains, the flows yeah. in the facility tripled. But we have a fixed limited capacity with these tunnels. So we, by building a third tunnel, we are able to expand how much water can flow and then there's no risk of our facility fl flooding, which is definitely something we do not want. So these are the reasons why we're doing our clear water tunnel, the tunnel. So back when this original two tunnels were built, it was a very different situation. The city didn't, didn't look the same. The, the, the needs were different. The technology was different. So these are actually actual pictures of how these tunnels were built. It was literally you blasted a trench, you dropped in your pipe, you covered it back up, and this is our workforce that did that. And that was probably okay back then. It did take us 10 years to build these tunnels using this this uh, technology, but this is not the way we would build a tunnel now. Obviously, we have technology on our friends. So. Uh, the modern way of building tunnels is what's called as a tunnel boring machine, which is, I like to think of it as a sideways, instead of a drill going downward, it's a drill traveling horizontally. But it's able, the, the beauty of the tunnel boring machine is that it's able to not only um, dig the tunnel, it actually builds the walls of the tunnel as it digs. So it's doing two, and to, to drive the point even home, it has a system that allows you to take the spoils, anything that's being mined, up into the surface. So it's doing three things. It's mining, it's building the tunnel, and uh, moving the, the dirt off site. So I'm not sure if you guys have seen this video before. For the benefit of those that haven't, this is just an animation that shows how the, 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 the tunnel boring machine is built. It has a face, which is this orange area right here. This is the yeah. part that actually carves out the soil. And then as it moves every five feet, um, it able to push itself off. Then you're able to build the walls, the segments. Uh, piece by piece. So every six segments make up the ring of the tunnel. And you build your your tunnel piece by piece. Piece by so, piece. Piece by piece. So I like to think of it as Legos, little Legos kind of just being put together and they click into place. Um, okay. So this is, our, this is our tunnel boring machine. Let me move it to the next slide. Before we go further, I want to know, and, I, and the joint out, outfall system, just give them a, a short, short overlay of what that is so that we oh. have to move forward. Okay, sorry, just let me explain right here. So this will be the, this is our service area. The joint outfall system is the actual main sewer hub that serves this lower part of LA County. So it pretty much has to do the heavy lifting in terms of sewers. It, it runs kind of from this northern part all the way down to Warren. And all these facilities that you see here, La Cañada, William Nero, San Jose, Pomona, they all tie into that main uh, that main hub, the main hub. So all the flows, I can tell you guys that some of the flow from Pomona is heading all the way down to Carson right now as we speak. So uh, this is actually the importance of the Warren facility because um, it's it's doing the heavy lifting for us, and we rely on that the joint outfall system every day to be able to manage LA County's water needs. But at the core of that is the Warren facility. So I cannot stress enough how. If something were to happen to the Warren facility, it's, it's a big deal for us, which is definitely something we want to avoid. So a, a silly question, but I know that the route is not a straight line. How does the boring machine turn? Okay, great. I actually have a little um, simulation of that. If okay. you can wait a couple slides over. Okay, so let me just get back on track where it was. I, okay, um, just for the benefit of being able to share with you, one of the questions we get asked is, how do you fit this big machine? It's over 800 feet long. So it's almost three SoFi stadiums kind of put together back to back. 
how do we put that underground to start? So obviously we start in pieces. We uh, Back in 2019, we started the construction site, which was so, to get ready for the tunnel machine to arrive by building this huge shaft in Carson. And then in 2020, the machine arrived and we were able to lower it. It had to be assembled and tested. And then in 2022 is when we actually started drilling. And this, let, me, let me replay the video again. So this is our tunnel boring machine kind of being put in pieces. We're lowering it into place. And you see the shield. That's actually the front part. So we call that the shield. And then it's being lowered into pieces. I like to think of it as like it's being, we have a little starter tunnel right here. So it's kind of like you shove it in there and you keep on moving in and it starts drilling. Off it goes. So this machine is actually pretty, it's pretty nifty. It's got a lot of technology in there. It's able to make wide curves, kind of like a semi truck. It does that wide turn region. I have a simulation on this to show you. What you guys are seeing here right now is the tunnel alignment. And this was very, the question that you had is it, why it has all these curves, right? Uh, unlike the previous tunnel, the first two tunnels, which were a straight shot, uh, during our planning sessions with the community, it was important for them that the tunnel be in public right away. So that's why our new tunnel alignment has these snake zigzag convention, but that also means that the tunnel boring machine needs to be able to to be able to make those turns. So our tunnel boring machine definitely is, is articulated, so it's able to be able to adapt to be able to make these turns. And that's actually one of the things that make this project very unique is that unlike other tunnel um, machine projects, this one has 30 curves, which is pretty high up up there in terms of uh, tunnel. And also uh, 30 curves for a seven mile project is actually a lot. So. We are asking a lot of our tunnel boring machine, but it was specifically designed for this job because we knew this alignment from the get-go. So it's able to uh, adjust and make those turns. Uh, what I'm also being able to show here is, that if I didn't mention earlier, this is a seven mile tunnel that's going from Carson out to Royal Palm. So in the alignment, you can see how we started at mile zero, which would have been in Carson. And correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the last time that this project was presented, it was probably in 2022. So you would have been somewhere around here. In this That's area, right. Somewhere around here, right? So since then, we are actually now, we just hit mile four a couple months ago. So we are actually over here, actually in Capital and Western. Mm -hmm. And so we have three miles to go. So we've done a lot. We have more to do, but we're actually on pretty good pace right now in our current condition. Is it on schedule? So far it's on schedule, but we are going to hit a challenge right now, which is actually my next slide. Uh, this slide shows us a lot. This actually shows us our tunnel depths. What we've seen here is that when we started, our you know the the tunneling depth was relatively shallow. It was up to 60, 50 at the lowest places. It was 40 feet below ground. But as we've headed over to the PB Peninsula, the the the, the geology changes, the technology changes. Now we're going under a mountain and we're actually drilling on, under bedrock. So now we're hitting harder soil. It takes us longer to be able to to move forward, whereas before we were hitting anywhere between 40 to 50 feet a day. Now we're down to 18, 20 because it is bedrock and different soil conditions. So our pace has slowed down, but again, we already knew that going in because we obviously had a geology report to going forward. So this was anticipated and that's why we have still a year left of drilling before we can finish the tunnel. Now, Maria, um, the question for me is that since you're going to an area where we've had recently some issues, geological issues, with the uh, soil and uh, you're saying we are in bedrock so it won't be a problem for our tunnel digging but it's going to be harder because it's hard bedrock at this time it's not yeah. that hill on the top where people houses are sliding up the hills is that correct that is correct so uh royal palms where the where the um, where the original tunnel out where the original tunnels end and where our outfall is our manifold structure is that location was actually picked because the geology is different to be able to not have landslides we wouldn't have put that there in the beginning for that and mind you that when we built these tunnels back in 1958 1938 it was built with dynamite and an open uh, you know a big trenching operation so back then that site was already deemed geologically safe which is why we built our operations there in the first place. So we're pretty confident that this is not that area. We don't. It's not the same as the White Point area. Uh, okay, so this is where I was excited to show you guys. So I apologize. It's going to move a little fast. If it buffers, my apology. But this is just showing you how far our tunnel, uh, if we were to walk it or drive it really fast, we're going to hit that ride together right now. So yeah, it's fast. We went down the one, um, the Figueroa. We did this kind of, you could see the wide turn that it makes underneath the 110 freeway. We had a maintenance stop. 
we played a little bit of golf right here at the mm -hmm. uh, the Harbor Park. Uh, then we went on the little swim uh, in the uh, Machado Lake. We had yeah. a second maintenance stop. We went up all the way up Gaffey. This is probably where you guys last saw it, maybe. Um, as we were going up Gaffey, we also stopped at another uh, pit stop for maintenance. And now we're kind of heading towards the transitional area. So now that the geology is changing, we passed Home Depot, uh, we keep going. And this is where the geology, the, the turning radius is very fair. It's obvious that the TVN has to make a wide turn. These turns are kind of planned ahead of time. So you can't, sh you can't turn, it's not a sharp turn, I guess. Uh, as we go up Capitol Drive, we went through this, you know, straight down um, the street, heading towards Western Avenue, which is where we are kind of now. We went underneath um, the shopping center here, and we're actually on the western side of that intersection, just about here. So we, um, no way I, <laughs> so this no is way. kind of where we are right now. Um, like again, our our the uh, the speed has uh, slowed down because we're on bedrock, and of course we're, we're you know when you operate a tunnel boring machine, it's kind of like you have to get a feel for it. So now the technology is changing, you got to operate it a little differently, and this is where our our operations crew under Grados is actually at right now. So we're going slower, but it's, you know, it's part of the learning curve of drilling in bedrock, which is the first time we're doing that right now. So a lot of the questions we get asked is, how does it look like inside the tunnel? So these are actually, this actually, this picture on the left is exactly what, it's actually a picture from inside the tunnel. You can see the Lego analogy comes into place. There are little blocks that are kind of put together. And we have all this equipment that's able to drive uh, to the working face of the tunnel, which is now four miles in. Um, so this is what we're seeing here, the tunnel walls from the inside. And this uh, video on the right, let me hit play, it's kind of how you're able to move from the from Carson to the front of the, you know, four miles in, but this is only the first mile of the tunnel, but it shows you pretty good. It shows you all the equipment that we have as we get closer, it shows you the tunnel walls, and it shows you all the cables and uh, again, the, the support system to be able to uh, maintain this operation. So you have air, power, communications, uh, safety lines, slurry lines, water lines, all that good stuff you're able to see from here. This video, this mile one was in August 2022. So uh, maybe one day I'll have a video of the whole thing seven miles out, but we're not there yet. Um, this video right here actually showing how it's how the inside of the shaft is from so once your tunnel the little car that I showed how it comes out as it's leaving and this is how we use uh, to move staff and equipment from the shaft side to the front of the building so I hear that it's a 45 minute ride to get to the working to the front of the building because it has to go pretty slow so uh, technology is going to do us wonders when we're able to just, you know, speed forward through it so we keep on drilling we're keeping on mining we still have a year left to go what happens once we build finish building the tunnel? Well, the, the tunnel is going to end at Royal Palm Beach is what we're seeing here now. Um, in case you didn't know, this area right here under this fence, it's actually a sanitation district's property where the tunnels end, where the tunnels end and the outfall start. The distinction between the two is that the tunnels are in land and they carry the clean water and the outfalls actually take that clean water and it lays underneath the ocean floor along the and release the water slowly within the water so water going into water so we need to have a transition place where we are able to connect the, the new tunnel that we're building to this manifold structure and this is actually the part two of the project so this uh this is another map that's kind of showing the underground structure that shows you here's the eight foot tunnel and the 12 foot tunnel this is the original configuration that we have and we have four outfalls that then go underneath the ocean floor. So they probably got about a mile and a half to two miles out. Um, but now we have a third tunnel. How are we gonna do that? So what I wanted to show you guys today is a video of what's actually underground. Cause I show you a schematic, it may not be a much, a lot, you know, may not be too impressive, but if we were to pop open that hatch, I just want you guys to get, to, uh, to get a glimpse of how impressive is the infrastructure that's under there. So if you guys just give me a minute, they do, it, it is a confined space entry. So you gotta be able to be safe before we go down there. And if you guys remember my, my coworker, Glenn, that's Glenn right there. Um, he has since retired. He's enjoying his retirement right now, but before I'm he left, retired. He, he, he did retire. He can't retire before it's done. Yeah, that's what I thought, but he's, you know, <laughs> he's enjoying retirement already. I just talked to him last week. Well, give him uh, our best. But if he, I will, but if you don't look at Glenn, you look behind him, you can see the, the pumps and the outfalls that we have. So we have four outfalls, 90 inch, 120 inch, which is the one that he's pointing to right now. So this is what actually goes into the ocean. 
Um, we are not changing the outfalls. That's not what's changing. What changes is really behind this wall. He's going to point to it right now because that's where we're going to have to connect the new tunnel. That's an 18 foot wide tunnel. So all the work has to happen behind there so that we are able to, you know, what's the point of building the tunnel? It's to, to bring the water out into the ocean. So we need to do that work. It is complicated work. Um, here's another map that shows kind of where the new line will come in, which is in yellow, and how our manifold structure needs to be enlarged to be able to connect into it. But before we enlarge it, we need to build a bypass to be able to uh, move the flow that way. Then mm -hmm. we build our, our permanent structure, and then we build valves to be able to move the route the water back and forth. So that's going to be a two-year part. So even after it's, we're done tunneling, we still have to do the work at Royal Palm Beach, which is expected to last another two years. Pull, pull that back to the pr prior screen. Yes. And I see that you you still have the original outfalls. Correct. Or a mile and a half. And so they will join there and use the original outfalls to go under the sea. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, so the outfalls going into the ocean are not changing. The only thing we're we're, do, we're doing, we're adding is a third tunnel to connect and then the water will be split among the, actually we have four, but only three are actually working. One's an emergency one, so. Okay. Right? All right, good. Awesome. Um, so right. as I was saying earlier, the work in Royal Palm is expected to take two years. It is gonna be a complicated and challenging project, but that's what the project, that's the last, last part of it. and. After going through a long planning process and even longer design process to be in construction and seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, no pun intended, is actually really big. It's really exciting because we're almost there. I mean, after all this planning, this is going to help the sanitation district system be more reliable for all the reasons that I mentioned earlier. Okay, Lena here. I have a question, by the way, a comment and a question. You're doing a great job with uh, presenting this. Very interesting. And you're doing a great job, Maria. However, Unless I missed it, how far out into the ocean will the uh, will it go? Well, um, sorry if I didn't clarify. Did you say that. that? If I didn't clarify it earlier, the tunnel ends right here at Royal Palms. The tunnel will not extend into the ocean. We already yeah, have. I see you had something ocean out existing ocean outfall. Or, yes. I mean, so so that's how far out does that go? That goes about a mile and a mile and a half okay. to the ocean, okay. but that's not changing. That's already yeah, there. Yeah, right. Been okay. There I just want. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. You did a great job on this. And the sanitation districts have they have tours um, out on the ocean to the outfall. Matter of fact, there's one coming right up next month. We do. Um, we have our, our boat tours again for us. We monitor. We monitor the waters where our discharge goes, and we've proven over time we have. You know, we're we're actually helping the environment because our outfalls became little coral reefs for the for the little for the critter life that's there. Um, but yeah, we we have a long history dating back to monitoring the ocean waters as there as well. And, I did um, that too. Were a few months ago uh, with my son, who's a a water engineer. And yes. anyway, it it was fascinating. They they put a net out and scooped up some of the uh, marine life that's around the um around the outfalls and we got to take a look at that and you know they look for any signs of uh, ecological issues mm -hmm. no, it, yeah, it, it was call really it the, interesting it's collection. called the trawl you put a, the net and you draw up the trawl yeah. and you're able to show it so yeah that's still going on um one thing i wanted to mention too is if you're interested in this presentation for your school group or any school organizations, we do have an outreach, uh, an educational component for this. So it would actually be me going out to making this presentation to students. We always like to inspire them to be the next water engineers of the next generation. So if yeah. anybody is out there, yeah. we are here for to for to do that as well, as well as any other uh, community group out there. So okay. that's an open uh, invitation. So we we have we test frequently for we can defer any ecological issues. We know where we are. We can look and study the water and see how the ocean is containing those issues. And that's very important for us. Yes, and the, the, the quality of the water is not changing. It's just a new path that the water is going out to the ocean. Okay, thank you. All right, well, that was the time for questions. I'd be happy to answer any if you have for me. Okay. Do we have any questions? I'd like to hear them. Well, maybe we should say more questions because we've already peppered you with plenty of them. But... I'm ready for more. It's okay. Go for it. 
I mean, right. I have the, the train answer. leaves Washington traveling at 30 <laughs> miles an hour. No, we're not How doing that. Uh, bad at those. Don't ask me that. You know, you know what, what we look at for economic development, we must, Vera knows this, we must have infrastructure. We must have water. We must have power. And now we must have the system to get rid of the wastewater. This is part of us. We can't develop this beautiful area without this infrastructure. And here it is. The economic development is actually a concerted effort of all of us. Sanitation district, water replenishment district, rest basin, engineering, all of that. The economic development is actually is infrastructure tied together with sustainable investments into the community for business. This is why we want to let our communities know and have this in our library. So if they want to repeat your information, they know what's happening, what's going on. That's the purpose of us having this meeting and having you there. My question, my question is when we go out to the water, what is the capacity barrier for the boats to go out? Do they have small capacity or do they have 10 or 12 or what? Uh, I, I don't, Maria, Maria, you probably know it better than I do. It's like 20, I think. It's, 20. it's not a big boat. It's 20 seems about right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And normally um, the these tours are for the, like the directors, which I happen to be one of. So um, in my, what, in that point, as my capacity as mayor, I was, that automatically puts you on the board of directors for the sanitation districts if you're one of the member cities. Okay. So, like Lula De Davis Holmes then is, is a member of their board. Okay. Um, anyway, so they had it for the, for, uh, for the directors and, um, and other council members were also allowed as guests. Um, I don't know who else they um, have. Staff is invited for the cities as well. So the city, the director has the jurisdiction to either invite his staff or family or members from his office to extend that invitation as well. So we've, we've been doing that for a long time. In fact, some of the directors that have been going know the tour, boat tour more than I do because they've been consistently going for many years. But yes, that's, that's a, um, I'm glad you've gone because it's, it's, you know, from when we work with water, actually, if I can bring up this, this little state of fact, when we do outreach, we found out that a lot of students hadn't even been to the ocean. So for, for reference, we there is a partnership that we have called Think Watershed, where we're actually taking students out to the ocean to kind of like the boat tour, but for students. And that is actually open to students within LA County as well. I can relay that information because it's exactly there will be a trawl as well and they're able to see it's actually even cooler they have microscopes and they're able to look at the water life but uh from a from a personal point of view we work for water and then we hardly make it out to the ocean so it's really important to make that connection why we're working hard to protect the ocean so that everybody can enjoy it um if i can bring up an ex another point that you brought up with the economy so this project has a project labor agreement so that we're actually that we would have at least a minimum i believe of 30 local hires, we're actually exceeded that, we're at 50%. So that's actually able to, it's a good, it's a good thing we like to highlight is it's, it's boosting, it's helping boost the economy in, in the area as well. Local hires are always good for a project like this, large big projects, infrastructure projects. Um, but the work doesn't end there. Um, if I can bring up another uh, project that is happening in the area as well would be the Pure Water Southern California project. Yes. That is actually, it's not sanitation districts, driven, we are a partner in that, but the way that it affects us is we're gonna have a water recycling uh, treatment plant at the Warren facility that will treat the water to a higher level. And what that means for us is that we will have to have some improvements being done on our treatment plant as well. So there will be construction going on. That means there will be jobs going to Carson when we're ready to do that, when we're ready to move forward at that level. So there's more work out there, it's gonna, it's gonna come down the pipeline. And your and your and your work crews are union unionized union labor. There, yeah, they did work for the Clearwater one. Yes, for Pure Water, we're not there yet, but it is in the works. Yeah, it, it, yeah, I think we can assume that it will be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maria, this is Lena again. I um, this, uh, I noticed that when you when you showed the um, uh, the slides with the uh, yellow thing going through all the different where it was going. 
you must have done a great job with uh, getting the community on board with this because I was looking at some of the places where you, the tunnel where you had to go through. Uh -huh. So did, was that an easy? I know nothing working with the community is never easy, but uh, you know, <laughs> it seemed as if because uh, you guys moved quite uh, rapidly from the time we saw this the last time. It seemed like you guys have really moved quite rapidly, and again. Mm -hmm the places where you were going, the route that you took, uh, communities, uh, you know, uh, uh, golf course, uh, 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 stores and highways and all of that. So you really went through, a, you know, different communities. So we have, yeah. Around. Yeah, we have gone out. Today we've done almost, let me see, I wrote it down, almost 100 meeting, not 100, yeah, close to 100, 120 community group meetings trying to reach out, speak about Clearwater. A lot of a lot of the community remembers from the planning phase when they were deciding mm -hmm. the path of the tunnel. So right. they were waiting, they, you know, they already kind of, actually they're like, finally you're doing the construction. So this, we were very fortunate that a lot of people remembered. Um, we have been doing outreach meeting with groups such as yourself, hey, no, let us know that we're coming. But one thing that we did work that it worked in our favor is the majority of the, the, the construction is in the public right away. Yeah, there's very few, I would say, less than a handful of places that it's not public right away, and in those easements have been dropped, dropped up. So we've kept the lines of communication going. Um, as we move forward closer to the to, to Royal Palms, of course, we're going to try to increase outreach. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's this still continues to happen to this day. In fact, this is like my second meeting of the week, so <laughs> we're still hitting it hard. We're still going out here, and you know, cool. I mean. The thing about the sewers is that you don't feel them, you don't see them, right? And this tunnel machine's underground. Yeah. We have yet to hear somebody say they felt the machine. But, but, but we recently, a couple of years ago with the county, we had some problems where some of the pipes burst. Okay. Oh, okay. Remember that? Yeah. And that became a strong issue for us. As you know, we, we, we were very much concerned about our waterways because we had recently some issues with uh, the water system. Oh, it was actually the rainwater system, but it had issues with that. Mm -hmm. So this is very important to our community and also to our economic growth of our community, which is where I'm coming to. Uh, I thank you for that information. I think you've given us a good base for what us to further move forward with you because we're a strong supporter of this project, as you are aware. So yeah. thank, thank you, you for so your much. time. I want you to stay around. I want you to hear something else. Okay. Barry, okay. Barry Wake's going uh, to give us some information about economic development updates for the Carson community. He always gets key economic structural numbers that we can use to make decisions. Barry, can you give us some further information on that? Well, not a lot to report today, but uh, we have some new data that's available from the Census Bureau that... This will not sound like a big deal, but it is a big deal. They, yeah, they, they've always had housing um, uh, uh -oh. sale information available and and mortgage information as far uh -oh. as how much people are, are spending, but they haven't had rent data available until now. Like, as a matter of fact, I think it's not uh, fully available until October, but still, um, that will be very interesting for helping us uh, better understand our housing profile here in Carson. So looking forward to getting that because um, that's been a big hole. And we know that people are in general, um, what they call rent burdened, paying more than a third of their income for housing. As a matter of fact, it's hard to find somebody who hasn't been a long time homeowner who isn't spending well over a third of their uh, income, income yeah. on housing. So yes. that's no surprise, but having that data will be interesting. And if you're not aware, the, the city, uh, as has most cities around the region, has added um, a number of locations where housing could be built in response to state requirements. And then I'll just say, uh, as a further piece of that, one of my students a few years ago, uh, one of my GIS students did her project on uh, the relationship between rent and um, rising rents and homelessness. And it was an exact one-to-one -one line. And I was surprised that it was that clear. So what we're starting to see across the country now is they're seeing what we've seen for a while, 
And so like in Idaho, there's an issue that housing costs have really shot up the last few years and suddenly they have a homeless issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, which is interesting because they said, oh, no, no, this is a this is a California problem, not us. So, uh -huh. so anyway, hey. but we're, we're trying to deal with it and uh, and we'll just see what happens next. So when you get that information, you can we can make it public or we can do. Yeah, a, that's the uh, census. It's it is public data. Yeah. And we do it. Nikea, did, did you hear that, Mrs. Carter? Ms. Carter? Is she still on? Nikea Carter? Well, it doesn't matter if she didn't catch it because it's recorded and you can watch it again and again and again. Uh, hopefully she can get that because that's important to us because home ownership is what we are trying to promote also. And stable homes. Now, I'm opening this up for any uh, questions. Uh, but on items for future discussion uh, will be on-site visit to the construction site. We'll probably think about setting those up. We would like to meet uh, with the Carson City Manager, this committee, for an update on economic development projects that they're thinking about that is coming through, through the door that no one has talk to the public about and we like to find out about those that's a couple of things if anyone wants us to discuss some other issues please let it be known to me or barry or any of our officers and we will look into those issues to bring it to uh our committee okay any oral communications from any of you hello I think everybody's happy. Yes, we're very happy. Hey, there's June. Hey, June. Hey, guys. Miss you guys. Any any oral communication from you? Any everything's going well? Yeah, actually, uh, it's a matter of fact. Uh, actually, we just uh, Assembly Member uh, Gibson and uh, Councilman uh, Hicks. We just finished our uh, expungement and also mini job fair at the Carson Community Center. Later on tonight, the assembly member will be actually at uh, Compton College, and he's hosting a town hall uh, in regards to lupus. And then August 10 at <clears throat> Castle Dominguez Hills is the fatherhood um, event. So, you know, I think I shared that uh, with Miss uh, Amy and all that as far as that flyer goes. And uh, thank you, by the way, Miss Amy, for doing that. Okay, uh, Nikea, can you kind of come in? Can you just, uh, I just saw your note to us and tell us uh, what you do and what your, your aims are in our community. Say, say yeah, again, I can hop off mute now. I'll go ahead. All right, you got it? Nikea? No, I thought June was still speaking. I'm trying to hear if he's still speaking. June, are you still speaking? No, I'm good. Thank you very much. All right. Nikea, give me give us a little what what are your aims as a as a developer and how, helping people with home ownership? Yes, sir. Um, so yeah, I do a lot of so first of all, I'm a real estate and mortgage broker. I've been licensed for 17 years. Um, I took care of residential sales, leasing, commercial sales, leasing as well. Um, so you know, every day I assist buyers to buy homes, I assist sellers where they want to own, buy a second home, third home. Um, there's some folks out here commercially that want to lease for their business. Eventually they want to buy the building. Um, I have some that want land. So I basically cover pretty much, you know, whatever the client's needs are real estate related. And if I can't handle it myself for some reason, I do have a network that I can refer people out as well. The flip side is also the financing. Um, so I can help anyone from, you know, buying their first home to, you know, getting a HELOC, um, which is a home equity line of credit. Um, also to find, you know, helping the VA, you know, zero down and all that good stuff. So, and again, if I can't, for some reason, I have a network that can. So um, I definitely can be a resource for anything real estate related. Thank you. Jim. Thank you for that. And we'd like to get you to join our chamber and get you involved with us as we move this city forward. Thank you. No, absolutely. All right, I have nothing else. So I think, uh, Barry, do you have anything to give us? 
No, I'm going to go ahead and stop our recording.